bonfire. Out back of the house, mom and me are feeding a fire. Furniture broken from a fight. The wood so cheap, it melts like blue. Like faces in the family photographs. The mattress will be last, so for now it's a fireside seat shared with a pack of reds and pint of early times. Yellow smoke hovers above our heads like words we can't say. There is a narrative here, implied in the ridge of fist marks shading her jaw, embedded like the broken glass in her boyfriend's foot when he stumbled out hungry, mumbling something about supper, and she sprayed at him a fistful of gravelly words, making him cat scatter back in the house. I want to tell her this won't last. If for no reason other than he will overdose six months down the road, she'll move deeper into the country of her estrangement, and I will leave for the coast, opting for a backseat bed in a Honda Accord over the basement mattress in a dark, and bloody ground. I wish I could run my fingertip in circles upon her sweaty palm, or pat my hand like a wing upon her back and say, okay, mom, you'll be my daughter, and I'll be the father you never knew. I will lift you from your burning life and carry you to the river where we'll sit licking ice cream cones. But I can't, I'm only 19 and still think I'm going to live forever. That half of everyone I'll ever love, I haven't even met. That when I leave, I'm leaving for good. This first one is called Taylor. It's true, the house was close to 200 years old. The main rooms, the upstairs and downstairs, human model. Two porches and a bedroom added on. Story is, when they first found the farm after they married, the rooms of the house were full of seeds, fescue and rye, clear to the ceilings, seeds they wouldn't have to buy. The surrounding fields had lain in waste for some time, unfarmed and eroded. Story is, they've been unable to get a loan or a co-signer anywhere, not even his father would go a note. So they had to mortgage against yearly crops with the owner. They had other choices. He decided not to go to college, had chosen to farm instead. She put him off marriage several years and graduated high school a year ahead of herself. What they did then was to work night and day, two jobs each, both farming, him for a tobacco factory in Louisville, her gardening and raising the children to come. They had other choices. The fields they couldn't level themselves, they bulldozed later and eventually spread all those seeds, empty in one room at a time, to hold the soil firm. One room at a time, they moved into that house, gathering cast off furniture. By the time they emptied the second room, there was space enough and they found a table somewhere, a used table with leaves to expand for their children. The tables for mica top would serve as biscuit board, candy marble slab, hot candy jar lineup, and chopping block. The table's rim, silver lip, would be scrubbed twice a year with still wool and a knife tip. On birthdays, a child was scooted beneath the chrome leg table to count her age or else not come out. Three times a day, plates arrived for meals with the main dish already divided. A can of mackerel or a pound of burger served eight or more with side dishes of vegetables hot, ready to pass. No one ate unless the food was blessed. No one ate until those who prepared the food were blessed. No one ate until the rain was blessed. It would do no good to protest when the man circling the second-hand table took a bite off random plates as he moved to the head where he would sit and pray. Old snow just melting for Marvin Bell. 
The talk is endless. I forget my line, forget how poets forget to write about nothing. There is nothing sinister about beauty. Martha Bell's and the strategies for pain and poetry are accumulation and insistence. There are reasons I forget about my line. I forget to accumulate in haste. The beauty cannot render any sudden fear. There are memories I have lost. I begin to research the insides of language, the great divinity of stars, the art of an artful sun. How can a girl remember her first kiss? His face melts like snow in my mind, turning to milk, running in dreams. How soon to wake up and remember my oddity, a beautiful stain I cannot replace. The hair becomes a mouthpiece, fulfilling colors and emotions. Thinking about what I said becomes a sudden fear. I become old snow just melting, a holistic blaze. Uh, here's a uh, poem uh, for my brother Jim, called Homage to Jim. At the broken gate of the supreme composition, he could not come to the throne. The radiation had burned his throat. Our reason, he didn't have to say a thing. For the afflicted, there is no plot. The radiation had burned the cranial nerves, and still they branched darkly out of LA to the sea, which could be nothing and anything. The wooden spokes of a religion, rubrics of belief near to you, far from you, there is no paradigm along the strand where the humans lose weight, burning star to star, spot of blood to spot of blood. They are dying to be restored and entertained, but not in the therapy that twisted his smile and loosened his teeth, dropping one by one from his hands to the sea.